Hello everyone and welcome to this week's weekly wear where I'm going to be testing out a product that the instant I saw it I knew I was going to want to check this out, give it a try with you all. It is a new foundation from Hourglass. It is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation and if you're like me you read that or hear that and you're just like mmm. So it's a foundation that's going to look like their powders though? Don't mind if I do. Although do mind if I do, because this is freaking expensive. It has that hourglass price tag to it. Shabang, here you go. You get the typical one ounce of product and it sets you back 58 buckaroonies, yikes. If I counted correctly, there are 32 different shades, which I'm not seeing arm swatches here on Sephora's website, but hopefully I'll be able to find some. In terms of the tiles, it looks decent. It's hard to tell from tiles. I'll say that much. But here you go. I didn't know this about Hourglass, that they are cruelty free. Certainly didn't know that, well, I doubt, are all of their products vegan now? Or have they been? Uh, but this one apparently is. It's gonna have a natural finish, be long wearing, medium coverage, and just overall have those light diffusing pigments to give a natural soft focus finish, blur the pores, and also has some good ingredients in it, apparently. Also contains less than 1% of synthetic fragrance, which is great. And this is the big stuff here. It says that it is going to be transfer resistant and resistant to humidity and sweat for flawless looking coverage that stays in place. Well, here in Minnesota, it is very humid. Like, extra it feels like you're swimming when you're outside, even though you are just walking. So I will be able to test this and to use, prep the skin, and apply a pea-sized amount of foundation. And then you can buff and build. So, let's go my friends let's give this a try I got the shade number five hopefully that will work for me let's take a look at this $58 butte it looks lovely definitely might be the exact same packaging as the primer their famous hourglass primer I forget what it's called but uh, it's a very nice bottle frosted glass hmm, made in Korea let's see what we got my friends let's give this a good shaking and then we can put it on my skin which as you can see it looks like skin got lumps bumps dark spots the works let's try this on top of all that shall we let's see if it's a good pump all that makes a pump good is that it works excellent now technically that's a pea size so I guess I should save some of this for the other side of my face I saved it no primer today just like always oh this might be a little yellow but that's okay we'll see we'll buff it and we'll make it work it does look like a little is going quite a long way so that's exciting to see I do you think I'm gonna need to pump out a little bit more for the other side of my face considering I'm gonna be using a sponge to blend that out but uh, overall I'm not mad looks like it's blending in nicely Da, it really does have like a soft focus finish to it. So I just splurted out a little bit more there. So we could do the other side of my face. And it looks like, even though it smears on quite yellow, it looks like it's kind of neutralizing once I blend it in. Now that I'm saying that, it's looking extra yellow on this side of my face. That's fabulous. Thank you, Hourglass. <laughs> There you go, for whatever reason, it looks way more yellow on this side. I don't know why a sponge would do that. Something about maybe the water in it or something? I don't know, but we are gonna layer since I'm not gonna be using concealer today. I do think I like how it looks on the brush side a little bit better, so I'm gonna go in with the classic method of kinda stippling it on where I wanna build, and then we will blend it out further with the sponge for a flawless finish. All right, so as I further blend and have this sit on my skin, it is looking a bit yellow, a bit orange. Indeed, it is. Aside from that, I think it looks like a nice foundation. Certainly looks like foundation. Doesn't look like my natural skin, but it does look 
good, I think, for a foundation. It looks definitely like it has that soft focus to it. So overall, I am pleased. I was able to build it up, layer it, spot conceal, and yeah, I'm just ready to get on with my day, put on the rest of my makeup. It's not gonna be much today, but it will be more makeup, and then I will see you all at the end of the night for my final check-in. Ready? Ding! Hello, everyone. Good evening. Yes. I'm in my pajamas. It was a volunteer night, okay? So I was in my shelter clothes, which has the name of the shelter on it. When I wasn't there, I've been in my PJs. But uh, yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> this is one of those nights where I wanted to just like, every time I looked at someone, or every time someone looked at my face, I wanted to be like, hi, I'm a YouTuber. I uh, test out makeup. I know that my makeup doesn't look great right now. Do you wanna see? Can you tell from far away? I mean, listen, it's not the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my life, but it's certainly not the most flattering. It just looks cakey and mask-like. Between my brows, it looks disgusting. It just looks like heavy, separated foundation that is entirely orange on me. This stuff, my God, does it oxidize. So I'm gonna wipe this off my face. I mean, happy to report that it at least has been lightweight but overall I'm not thrilled with the way that it looks and uh, yeah, like I said. <laughs> not only am I excited to wipe this off my face, I'm a little scared to be testing it out any further, but that is what I'm here for, so I'm gonna do so. And hopefully with primers and less layers and all that stuff, hopefully I can get it to look a little better and we'll see how it does. So I'll go do that testing and I'll be back to y'all with those results in just a second here. Ready? Ding. Hello everyone. Good evening. It's the end of the night here on day three of testing out this new Hourglass foundation. And before I spoil things for you guys, I'm just going to hop on into how the past couple of days of wear have gone. So on day two, I used my Smashbox hydrating primer along with my Milk Makeup Concealer, a brush and a sponge, and just one very light layer of this foundation. I don't even think it was a full pump of the product and like I said, I just lightly applied it. It still went on to my skin very yellow slash orange, but thankfully overall I thought it looked better on my skin with the lighter coverage, the lighter layer of things. I was hoping that the hydrating primer would also help it to smooth things over, make it look a little less dry on my skin. Not Perfect, you know, it still emphasized my dry spots, I thought, especially on my forehead, but you know, overall, I thought it looked fine, definitely work withable for the day. And all day, once again, it did feel lightweight throughout wear, but whenever I touched my face, even just the slightest bit, you know, when I wear foundation and I've got an itch on my face, I don't literally itch it, I just usually like kind of poke or tap at it until the itch goes away, and even that makes it so that, you know, when I look at my finger afterwards, it's, I wouldn't say covered in foundation, but there is noticeable transfer that the foundation had come off of my face. And then at the end of the night, I'm sorry, I didn't get a close-up of it, I don't think very well, but, you know, normal close-ups and everything and side by side for you guys, but I thought it looked fine from far away, but up close it had definitely cracked around my mouth once again, especially on my chin area. And as I expected, just based on the transfer I was seeing all day, it did wipe off on my finger when I tested it that way at the end of the night as well. So not great to see, but I was not going to give up. I went ahead and tested it one more day here. Day three, I went ahead and tested the limits. I used a mattifying primer just to see how that would go. My Glam Glow mattifying primer and then my NYX serum concealer. And I used a lighter layer once again of the foundation, but I did use a couple of layers where I thought it needed some extra evening out and just coverage on my skin. So overall I did, you know, I thought it looked fine once again. Like this isn't anything horrific or offensive on my skin by any means. It just, it looks fine. It looks like a foundation and a fine foundation at that, but I mean it just, it just looks fine. And throughout the day, once again, it was a super laid back kind of a day in terms of physical activity. I was inside all day just doing chores around the apartment, playing with the cats and getting work done. So nothing crazy, but I do look quite oily at the end of the night here tonight. At least 
I think, a little bit more noticeably shiny than normal, and it looks horrifically cracked around my mouth, be it my moustache area, my smile lines, my chin, all of that. It just doesn't look great, and I have once again been noticing transfer, and it kind of feels like it's going to transfer today. It's just, you know, I gave this foundation a good old, what do they say, a good old college try, but... Not even education could help this one out. It just, this is how it looks on my face. I'm not a fan. I personally will not be wearing it. I mean, have I, I'm skipping over the pros and cons. You guys want pros and cons per use? I can give them to you. Let's go over them, shall we? Pros. This is easily applied. It's blendable. You can layer it to get your desired coverage. So I think those are great things. And throughout wear, it really is a very lightweight foundation. It, at the end of the night, I would say it's definitely, it's tangible. You can tell you're wearing a foundation. You can feel it on your skin, but it's nothing heavy. It just, it has that feeling like it's gonna transfer, which is not my favorite. But uh, I'm getting into the cons, aren't I? Let me not rush. Uh, first off, this oxidizes like crazy. I think. I guess it's not the worst offender that I've ever seen, but this does oxidize and at least this shade runs quite orange, so I don't know. I would maybe go into stores to check for your shade before buying online. This one might be a little trickier than normal, at least that was my experience. It also is not the most natural looking of foundations. Like I said, it's not the worst offender ever, but I personally prefer my foundation to look a little nicer than this. You know, if someone can tell or see that I'm wearing foundation, I want them to be like, oh, that looks like a nice foundation she's wearing, not, oh, she's wearing foundation. You get the difference? It also separates and cracks pretty badly with wear, not cute at the end of the night, and also it transfers. It just does. So that is that. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I was really excited about this foundation. I really was. It sounds lovely because the powders are lovely from Hourglass in their ambient line of things, but this just did not work out for me. I'm bummed. You guys should let me know if you have tried out this foundation, if you were excited about it, and did it give the same or different results on you as it did on me. Let me know what kind of skin you have, all that good stuff down below. You can also let me know if there are any other new releases or old releases, just products, tried and trues or just ones you're curious about, whatever you want, leave them in the comments down below so that I can test them in upcoming weekly wears. You can also just let me know how you're doing, whatever you would like in the comments and by giving the video a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe. You can tippity tap the notification bell down below and become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. Until next time, just stay well until, stay well, <laughs> stay well until then. Bye.